Video 1 Genesis and Geomorphology This video examines the evidence for the Genesis Flood found in the appearance or geomorphology of the Earth's surface. Video 2 Genesis Rocks and Fossils describes how the Earth's sedimentary rocks were laid down and the fossils formed within a catastrophist flood paradigm. And Video 3 After the Flood provides a biblical understanding of the world after the Genesis Flood. Few people today believe that the global Genesis flood of the Bible and the destruction of the old world is anything more than a legend. As a result, the authority of scripture has been undermined. Yet this wasn't always the case. Until the 1850s, the book of Genesis was held to be an accurate account of world history, with an earth less than 10,000 years old and having a supernatural creator. This was the world view of many of the founding fathers of modern science, men such as Sir Isaac Newton, Louis Pasteur and Charles Babbage. Following the publication of Charles Lyell's Principles of Geology in 1830, the uniformitarian view of the earth's history began to predominate. This is slow and steady change over ever-increasing timescales. Lyell's stated purpose was to free the science from Moses. This tells us that he was not looking at the evidence to see where it led, but had a no-God agenda. At the present time, geologists are once again beginning to recognise the catastrophic nature of the evidence, but these neo-catastrophists maintain long periods of time between events, not because the evidence proves it, but in order to accommodate the claims of evolutionary biology, a separate subject. The no-God agenda is still the paradigm today in the natural sciences. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3 that such a time would come when people would reject the flood in order to reject scripture. The idea of a single catastrophe would be mocked despite the evidence and not because of it. Why is an understanding of the flood important? Because Jesus taught it, and he also said that if we would not believe earthly things, where the physical evidence is available for examination, then we would not believe heavenly things. Can we tell, by looking at a landscape, how old it is? For example, what about this landscape? Impressive cliffs, rounded boulders and stones, and a heavily eroded hillside would all seem to suggest age, yet I am older by one year than Searcy Island, which appeared suddenly in 1963. Since that time, half of it has been eroded away. It is a landscape which, although giving the appearance of age, is very young. Its appearance gives no clue to its age. The Bible describes a global flood in which the old earth was totally destroyed and all mammalian life died. The Earth's surface was completely covered by water to a minimum depth of 50 feet. This occurred, according to biblical chronology, 4,400 years ago. God did this because the Earth was filled with violence and all flesh had become corrupt. God promised Noah that God would destroy man with the Earth. Noah preached God's judgment for 120 years, but no one apart from his family believed him. The Genesis Flood is taught in the Bible as a global catastrophe. The old world, peoples and civilizations were annihilated. Global volcanism and the introduction to the surface of underground water, minerals and chemicals. The deposition of layers of marine sediment thousands of metres thick suggests storms, mega tsunamis and movements of large bodies of water at high speeds causing the sudden burial of marine organisms and mammalian body parts. Towards the end, the uplift of the present-day continental surfaces and the lowering of the present-day sea basins caused the draining of the water off the land, firstly as massive sheet flow and later as channel flow. In the 1770s, the British explorer Captain Cook made two circumnavigations of the globe and found that many of the peoples he met possessed a flood legend Subsequently, over 200 of these flood accounts have been recorded. Most of them describe a flood of global extent and have significant correlations with the Genesis flood, including survival of one family by boat, wickedness being the cause of judgment, forewarning and landing on a mountain. For instance, the Mandarin Chinese word for boat incorporates the characters for vessel, eight and people. What did the ark look like? not like these paintings anyway, which are not useful hull shapes. Livestock is carried today though, 
the Stella Deneb carries 21,000 head of cattle. Genesis chapter 7 describes a three-decked vessel about 440 feet in length, 80 feet height and 50 foot beam. These are standard shipbuilding ratios for large vessels today, giving good stability and capacity. The loaded draft, if half the height, would have been around 40 foot, the depth of water which covered the earth. Loaded displacement at that draft would be about 21,000 tonnes. Marine archaeology such as this 7th century Greek ship demonstrates that ancient wooden ships were built to a higher standard than in subsequent millennia. Each plank is secured to the next by a mortise and tenon joint as well as being nailed to the frames. The ark may have been constructed using this technique which is stronger than wooden ship building today. The building of large ships in wood is sometimes raised as an objection to the ark. However, large wooden ships can be built. During the First World War, emergency wooden steam freighters were built, and the Chinese are building a 450 foot long replica cargo junk, similar to the one reported by Marco Polo in 1285. The ark was not required to navigate, only to act as a refuge. This means that no allowance had to be made for masts and sails, or machinery spaces and fuel like ships of today. All the space was available for its cargo. Only the kinds of animals were taken, not every variety, nor were any marine or amphibian creatures or insects, and it would not have been necessary to carry fully grown specimens. These animals came to Noah, so he didn't have to collect them or decide which ones to take. The biblical timeline is for a 1700 year pre-flood earth. This was likely to have been an advanced and large civilization, probably numbering hundreds of millions of people, dwelling upon an earth with an ecology very different from today. Rain as we know it was unknown, the earth being irrigated by underground water reservoirs and a mist. Most of the earth was habitable dry land, in contrast to today where most of the globe is uninhabitable. God told Noah to begin loading the ark seven days before the flood began. The first 40 days of the flood event can be called the eruptive phase, with heavy rain caused by the collapse of the atmosphere and water coming from the breaking open of the earth's surface. A further 50 days of rising waters follows and remain at their maximum height for 60 days, a total therefore of 150 days. The ark is aground at the end of this period. The next 220 days can be divided into the sheet flow of water off the new continents and channel flow or secondary drainage. It is these two phases that are important for the Earth's geomorphology, the sheet flow of water and subsequent channel flow. Movement of such large bodies of water over partially consolidated marine sediment should be the significant factors in today's appearance of the Earth's surface. Most people think of the flood in terms of rain, and whilst this can be catastrophic, it was not the major event. It was the breaking open of the fountains of the deep. This refers to the underground water reservoirs and volcanic eruptions. Many of these volcanoes are now on the present day seafloor, some of which are 7 kilometers high. They also release chemicals into the water, which later served to lithify or concrete the marine sediment, turning it to rock. Another consequence was to heat up the seawater, which was an important factor in the post-flood ice age. Water on the move is heavy, fast and carries large objects and abrasive material, cutting and gouging its way through obstacles. High pressure water is used in industrial applications such as metal cutting and can damage ships propellers through the process of cavitation. Cavitation can also destroy rock and steel reinforced concrete such as this dam spillway. This happens quickly and so it is wrong to say that long periods of time are required for water to modify a landscape. You just need the right conditions.